OK, well, first of all, let's um, work on grain position, because it's at the top of our list. I put it there strategically, because I knew which order I was going to try and present this. Uh, going back to our little engine here for uh, you know, playing back a, a sound, um, we well, I'm going to alter it a little bit. Um, and I'm going to alter it for a reason which I will make a little bit clearer later on. Um, but uh, but for now, I'm just going to do it. We'll keep for the time being. We'll we'll keep our grain length at 200 milliseconds in length. Um, but I'm going to change where I'm reading from and to. So I'm going to read from zero to one over 200 milliseconds. Well, obviously that's not going to be of much use to us in terms of reading through that file um, because it's only going to read from zero milliseconds to one millisecond. Um, so that's going to be uh, that's not really what we want. And so I'm obviously going to have to do some calculation with what's coming out of line here. Um, but as I say, there is a reason why I want to count from 0 to 1, and it has to do with enveloping, which, as I say, I will come back to. So what do we need to put between line and play? Well, um, we want uh, our grain length to be 200 milliseconds, so I'm going to multiply uh, that uh, the output of line um, by 200. Um, and so, <coughs> well, I'll do that first and then explain why. Oops, sorry. It needs to be a tilde, of course, because we're in signal domain there. So now, actually, I'll, I'll send this to a signal number box so you can see what it's doing. And I will change the, uh, the interval of that to 20 milliseconds rather than 100 so that we can see it happening rather less jerkily than it otherwise would. So now, <coughs> oops, don't worry about what's there at the moment, um, it's going to count from 0 to one, 1 over 200 milliseconds, but that value is going to be multiplied by 200. So now if I were to con connect that to here and play it back, oops, sorry, to there and play it back, then we're going to get exactly what we had before, which was, uh, or prior to me changing that to 200, 400, which was from to go from 0 to 200 over 200 milliseconds, which it does. Um, <coughs> and that's handy because we can then just add a value to that based on the position within the file here. So if I were to um, add, say, uh, 1000 to that, then it will play from 1000 milliseconds for 200 milliseconds. So it will play from 1000 1000 milliseconds to 1200 milliseconds over 200 milliseconds. Um, so I can add any value to whatever's coming out of here, and it will just um, uh, play from that value to 200 milliseconds later. Um, so I'm going to add a, an add addition box to this. Um, but I'm not going to tell it how much to add to that because I don't yet know, or at least I want that to be um, easily variable. Uh, but at the moment, obviously, zero is being added to it, so it's just going to it's going to continue to add. It's going to continue to play from zero to two hundred. So how do how do I um, put in a position um, value into that? Um, well, I could just send a number box. Um, but I don't actually know how long this file is, and I might want a more intuitive graphical means of um, of, of seeing whereabouts in that file I am. Um, so what I'm going to do is going to use um, something which I, I'm not sure whether I've uh, introduced before, um, and I'm actually not going to be using it for the purpose for which it's designed, um, and that is the uh, multi-slider object. And I'm using the multi-slider object because it looks nice, <laughs> basically. Um, and also because it deals with floats very easily. Um, it's it's quite uh, malleable in terms of um, its range and so on. Um, but, yeah, uh, if I um, go into its inspector um, and look down, uh, I can, first of all, make it uh, v uh, horizontal in orientation. Um, and <coughs> actually, I think that's probably. Oh yes, the other thing I need to do is to change from um, 
to continuous data output. So that means that it will always spit out data whenever I change the value of the slider or whenever I move the slider. Otherwise, it would only send data when I release the slider, which is not what I want. So I'm going to put that down. We can worry about the range in a bit, although minus 1 to 1 is not appropriate at the moment. So, um, so as you can see, if I put this at the bottom of our waveform display, um, this is why I prefer it to the slider objects, because the sliders have rounded edges and I wanted it to look um, uh, a bit more consistent in terms of style with uh, these uh, these objects here. So it's um, it's not you know not the only object you could use for this certainly. Um, but you noticed before it had a range of minus one to one, which is no use to me if I'm trying to send that as position data. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find out, or what I need to do is to find out the duration of the sound that I've imported. Uh, so to do that, I'm going to use the info tilde object, which if you uh, tell it to refer to the to the buffer that you want it to uh, tell you information about, uh, so if I put in sound, then it will refer to that buffer and um, uh, and I can derive information from it. And the way I derive information from it is by sending a bang message to its input. Now, handily, uh, this object here, the buffer object, uh, sends a bang out of its right-hand outlet when you finish loading a file. So if I connect that to there, then what will happen is that when I load a file into there, it will spit out a bang, which in turn will make uh, info spit out information from each of these outlets here. And as you can see, they all have different things that they report. So it will tell you the sampling rate, it will tell you the sample instrument info, I'm not quite sure what that means to be honest, um, sustain loop start, sustain loop end, blah 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 blah. The one we want is second from the right and it is the total time. Um, and what am I going to do with that information? I'm going to use it to define the range for this uh, multi-slider object here, which only has one slider, so it's basically a slider object. Um, <coughs> so um, I will tell it if I if I put in range um, and then uh, tell it to, to go from zero to the number that uh, info reports as its total time, and then send that to this. Then it will um, it will make that range slider the appropriate range. Um, so <coughs> again, if I go back to the inspector window for this and check it, uh, we'll see that it's going from minus one to one. I'll leave that uh, viewable. Um, and at the moment, of course, it's not. Uh, well, that's no good. It's going to turn off anyway. Never mind. I'll come back to it in a minute. Uh, it hasn't reported anything about this sound because it hasn't received a bang yet. I've only just connected this to here. It hasn't. I haven't actually um, sent. I mean, I could just send a, put a send a bang message in. But what I'll do um, is to just to demonstrate that it works. I'll send um, the spoon drop sound again into uh, the buffer, and um, at that point, if I now go back and click on this um, multi slider object you'll see that the range has now changed to report 0 to uh, 14 and a half seconds, which is basically how long the file is, or just over. Um, <coughs> so now, um, this will report to me, wherever I have this in here, it will send out whereabouts in the file I am. So I'm now about 3 seconds into the file, and you can see that about 3 seconds in the file there's an event and if I go a little bit further on, we get to another event at about nearly six seconds, and so on. So that information I can then send to this plus object here. Um, so hopefully, if I move to this point here, you'll notice those little clicks because it's 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 moving um, the playback point. So you're getting a click every time I move it. So we'll deal with that in a minute. So that's playing from there. Okay, that's playing slightly different sound, and so on. So we're making a grain, we're getting our grain from different points in the file. So that works. So we have a, we've been able to 
uh, determine a grain position and to play 200 milliseconds worth of that sound uh, when we trigger a grain. Um, <coughs> so uh, a triumph, or well a minor one at least. 